Hello and welcome to the next Crack a Pack episode. Today we are opening up, I believe for the first time on this series, a pack of Odyssey. I really like this set. There's a lot of really good cards in it. Uh, the best one being Entomb, sitting right around $24. Uh, it's just a super powerful card in uh, Legacy Reanimator. Uh, super, super good. One black, put something from your deck into your graveyard. Uh, and it's instant speed, so really, really good. Uh, as always, though, we are going to go through this as if we are in a limited environment, so we're going to see what our first pick would be, or at least what some of the choices would be. Uh, we will go through basically every card just to be safe, so let's go ahead and kick it off with a Leaf Dancer. It is a 2-2 two -two for 1 and 2 green. It has Forest Walk. If you don't know what Forest Walk does, because that's sort of been phased out at this point, uh, basically Land Walk of any kind. Uh, says that if an opponent controls that land, this creature can't be blocked by that opponent. And so, for instance, with Forest Walk, if you're facing an opponent that has a forest on the battlefield uh, and you swing in with the Leaf Dancer, they are not able to block it. Um, I don't value that super highly, uh, just because I think it's good, but it's only really good against certain things. So it's a little bit limiting. Uh, last rights, two and a black for a sorcery. Discard any number of cards from your hand. Target player reveals his or her hand, then you choose a non-land card from it for each card discarded this way. That player discards those cards. Uh, super powerful ability, actually, and because you can use this to your advantage uh, in terms of discarding cards that you actually want to discard, uh, I, I, don't I don't hate this card, excuse me. That being said, I don't think it's very good in limited, uh, just because I don't know how easy it would be to actually build around that. Uh, Pilgrim of Justice, 1-3 for 2 and a white. Protection from red, which is always a bonus. You can also then pay 1 white and sacrifice it. The next time a red source of your choice would deal damage this turn, you can prevent that damage. Uh, this is reminiscent of the Circle of Protection cards. I don't super love this. Uh, I think for 3, I'd rather get a little bit more power, uh, but that's just personal opinion. Uh, re repel, uh, 3 and a blue for an instant. Put target creature on top of its owner's library. This is my kind of card, uh, to be honest. So not only is this good because it bounces a threat, but it also sets your opponent back a turn because you now know what the next card they're going to be drawing is. And most times they're probably just going to either replay that card or play something a little bit worse from their hand. Uh, so I actually so far am really into that. Um, Rabbit Elephant, four and a green for a three, four. Uh, when it becomes blocked, it gets plus two, plus two until end of turn for each creature blocking it. This is a great aggressive card. Uh, it's a little bit high costed. Uh, it is a three, four for five, which is a little much, but it does encourage you to be aggressive. And uh, obviously when it when it is attacking and it's blocked, it uh, gets a little bit of a boost. So it might be a little bit harder to kill. Uh, I would actually consider that. So we have a Mystic Zealot. 2-4 uh, for 3 and a white. It has Threshold, uh, which basically Threshold gives a certain bonus if uh, you have 7 or more cards in your graveyard. <clears throat> in this case, it gets plus 1, plus 1, and has Flying, which I actually think is pretty good. 2-4 uh, four for 4 isn't amazing, uh, and I don't necessarily want to bank on Threshold, but uh, to, give, to get a 3-5 with Flying for 4 is really good. So uh, I would potentially consider that. We'll, we'll keep it in the maybe pile for now. Uh, Kamal's Desire, I believe I'm saying that per, uh, correctly, is one in a red for an enchant creature. Uh, it gives it first strike, and then if you meet threshold, it gets plus three plus O. Oh. I think it's fine, but I don't generally like drafting enchant creatures uh, in a limited environment because you're dependent then on the creatures. Uh, this is similar as well. This is in the same cycle. Uh, Abishan's Desire, again, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. One blue, Enchanted Creature has Flying, uh, and if you meet Threshold, it can't be the target of spells or abilities. That's great. Uh, that makes it a little bit better, just because uh, you're not going to get two for one, as easily at least, uh, because they can't actually target if you meet that Threshold. Um, Chatter of the Squirrel, this card's actually really good. Uh, one green, put a 1-1 one, one green squirrel creature token excuse me, into play, and then you can flash it back for one and a green, which means you can play it from your graveyard by exiling it and paying that cost. I really like cards like that, to be honest. Uh, Dream win Winder, excuse me, 4-3 four, four, three for 3 and a blue. It can't attack unless the, control, the defending player excuse me, controls an island. Uh, you can then pay a blue and sacrifice an island, and target land becomes an island until the end of the turn. I don't know how much I like this. Uh, I think it's definitely a powerful card, 
Uh, you can definitely poke through some damage, but I don't think it's necessarily first pickable. Uh, Skeletal Scrying is our first uncommon two and a, or excuse me, X in black. As an additional cost to play Skeletal Scrying, remove X cards in your graveyard from the game. You then draw X cards and you lose X life. This card's hugely powerful. Uh, to be able to do, to basically draw as many cards as you need based on your graveyard is fantastic. Uh, that being said, I think in a limited environment, I'd rather have some creatures that do a little bit more. So I might be off base with that one, uh, but so far I don't think that would be my pick. Cabal Pit, this is a cycle of lands, uh, monocolored lands. You can tap it to add black to your mana pool and it deals one damage to you. If you meet threshold, you can pay a black and tap it and then sacrifice it and target creature gets minus two, minus two until end of turn. Uh, that It's great in the idea that it is a removal spell on a land. However, uh, later in the game is really when you're going to be meeting threshold. And so at best, uh, this is either going to sort of shake up combat a little bit or get rid of just a very low cost creature. I don't know that I would value it too highly, but again, I could be off base with that. Uh, blessed Orator? I hope I'm saying that correctly. Uh, a 1-4 for 3 and a white. Other creatures you control get plus 0, plus 1. Uh, it's great. It's an anthem effect. That's fantastic. But it is just a 1-4. Uh, so I'm not the biggest fan of this. I would much rather have a little bit more power than a little bit more toughness. That being said, this does kind of save you during combat a little bit. Uh, it will boost all of your stuff. It's definitely a powerful card. Uh, so our rare is actually uh, an interesting card. Abishan Cephalid emperor I, I, hopefully that's right uh four and two blue for a three three you can tap an untapped cephalid you control to tap target permanent and then pay three blue and tap all creatures without flying this is a powerful card uh if you're in that archetype but it definitely sticks you in that archetype uh that is a viable archetype i will say but i think it's a little too specific in my opinion uh we also do have a foil a ray of distortion Three and a white for an instant destroy target artifact or enchantment. And then you can flash it back for four and two white. Always a decent sideboard card, but definitely not first pickable by any means. So the cards I would be considering are these. Uh, and honestly, uh, I would say it's really between these two for me. Uh, and because I'm a blue player at heart, I would probably go for this. Uh, this is a great aggressive card though, so don't don't let me steer you wrong but I just happen to really enjoy these cards. Uh, I think they're fantastic. So guys, hopefully you enjoyed this. Hopefully you learned a little something. Uh, if you did, make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And if you really enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our content. But until the next video, guys, I'm going to get out of here. I will see you later. Thank you so much for watching.